This video is a quick summary of finding the measures of centre and spread with numerical data. So before we jump into analysing and interpreting the data, we need to summarise some of those key statistics. And the statistics that we typically use in general maths to find the centre is mean, median and mode, most commonly mean and median. And then to measure the spread, we're talking about the range or the interquartile range of the data. And at times we're also using the standard deviation. So typically you will see uh, mean and median range and interquartile range with most of our statistical summaries. But then mean and standard deviation tend to be used exclusively for symmetrical data distributions. So firstly, our measures of spread. As we said, mean, median and mode are our three key measures. The mean we can see there is often referred to um, as the average of a data set. So that's the most common thing that we're used to seeing. Now the little notation here, the X with a bar on top, is what we do see on our calculator and it can be used as shorthand for mean. And the way that we calculate our mean is by doing the sum of all our data values and then dividing it by the number of data values we have. Often though, we will be putting data into our calculator and we're able to use the summary stats from there. The median is the data value that lies in the middle of our ordered data set. And that's quite important that our data is in order if we are finding that by hand from the data on paper. We can find the position of our median by finding the number of data points plus one divided by two. And we'll have a look at an example of that shortly. And our third measure of spread, mode, is the most frequent data value or interval of data, value, data values, particularly if we've got grouped data. Most often this is used in categorical data sets, but occasionally you will be asked questions to identify the mode of a numerical data set. Now looking at our measures of spread, so again, we have three key measures of spread. So the range is the difference between the largest and the smallest data value. So it's how spread out the whole distribution is. And we find our range by taking the maximum value and minusing the minimum value. For our interquartile range, that's when we're looking at splitting our data into quartiles or into four equal parts in terms of the number of data values. And we often see this as part of our five number summary when we're looking at box plots. And so our interquartile range tells us where the middle 50% of the data is and how spread or compact it is. We, as we said, we mostly use this for displays of box plots. And we find that it can be a more appropriate measure of spread if there are outliers in your data. So it's not impacted by those outliers at the top or the bottom of your data set. We find our interquartile range firstly by finding our upper and our lower quartile and subtracting those to find the difference. And our third measure of spread, standard deviation, often denoted by S with a sub X. This is a sample standard deviation and it measures the average deviation or distance difference from a data value from the mean of that data set. And we look at in more detail at standard deviation and how that relates to mean when we're looking at investigating symmetrical data sets. We'll now have a look at a couple of quick examples about how to find some of these key statistics. So in this first example, we've got an ordered stem plot showing the maximum temperature in degrees Celsius for 15 days. And the important thing with our stem plot to remember is that we have always given to us a key. And so we can see that number nine slash two actually represents the temperature 9.2 degrees. The other piece of information we've been given, but we could also count, is the total number of data values. So there are 15 data values in this set. So firstly, we want to find the range and remembering that my range is given as my maximum value minus my minimum value. And so for the data set here, I've got a maximum of 16 and a minimum of 9.2. So when I do 16 minus 9.2, 
I end up with a range of 6.8 degrees Celsius. My median data value will be um, in the middle of this data set. Now we have an ordered stem plot, so I can count straight off the data that's here. Before I do that, I may want to find the position of my median. Remember, this is not the median itself. It is the position or the, the place it is in this data set. So if there are 15 data points, we add one, divide by two, and that says it is the eighth value in our data set. So working in order, you can start at the minimum value or the maximum value and count your way in towards the middle. And we want to land on the eighth value. So I'm going to start at the minimum and count my way across. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so note each time I was coming back to the stem and working out to count my eight values. If I wanted to double check, I could then start at my maximum and count down. And the difference there would be I'm counting in from the outside. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and again, landing on that value there as the eighth value. So I'm definitely in the middle. And I can say that my median value using the key 13 slash seven. So my median is 13.7 degrees Celsius. The third part, now finding the interquartile range. So I need to split my bottom half of the data into half again to make quarters. So my seven has been knocked out. It is the median, so it's already been accounted for. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data values below that point. So if I wanted to again calculate the position of my lower quartile, Q1, I've got seven values. So I add one and divide by two, and it will be the fourth value from the minimum. And Q3 will be the fourth value from the maximum. And working my way in, so I start at the minimum, one, two, three, four. So I've got Q1 is 12.2. And from the maximum, one, two, three, four. My Q3 is 15.2, which gives me an interquartile range of three degrees Celsius. So there's my three key values that I wanted to find. My range at 6.8, my median at 13.7, and my interquartile range at three. For this next example, we're going to have a quick refresher on how to use our calculator to both enter data, but also to calculate these summary statistics. So the first thing that we need to do is start our calculator up and open up a lists and spreadsheets page. And so from the menu, I'm going to select lists and spreadsheets. The first thing I should do is put in a title or a label for my data. And I haven't got anything in here that identifies it, so I'm just going to call it EG, for example. It's really good practice to use a minimum, minimum of two letters so that it doesn't get confused about whether you're talking about a column or a variable that you've entered. So if I just had the letter A, it would always ask me, do you mean the data that's in column A or do you mean the variable you labelled A? So it's just easier to always use two letters there. So I'm going to now enter in my data underneath that column. And so I'm just entering each one in as I can read it off my page. And then once I've done that, I am able to now find or use my calculator to find um, some summary statistics. So the three things that I'm being asked for in this example is the mean, the median and the standard deviation. But if I wanted any of the other values that I've currently been looking at, so including my maximum, my minimum, so that I can calculate the range, my Q3 and my Q1, so I can calculate the interquartile range, I can find that all in this one set of steps. So once I have my data in, 
we're going to go into the menu. I'm going into number four, statistics. One, stat calculations. And then into the first one here, one variable statistics. And so this means I'm going to calculate a set of um, data or statistics from one set of numbers. I have one list and that will be fairly standard of what you're looking to do. And then it'll ask me, where is this list of data? So I've labeled mine EG, and this is helpful when you've got multiple sets of data that you need to find um, particular statistics for. Then I can just click OK. And in my columns here, I now have a series of data um, or statistics being provided to me. I can find here, I've got the mean. So that's that symbol again, X with a bar on top. That's my mean value. I've got for information, really, the sum of all the variables or the data. I've got the sum of the data squared. We don't use either of those in general, but they are provided each time. SX is our standard deviation. We also have a population standard deviation, which um, we'll talk about more later, but it's not one that we concentrate on. It's just the sample standard deviation that we'll use. We then get the number of data values, nine, the minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. So those five numbers we can see on the screen now, five statistics, form the basis of our box plots. So that's our five number summary. So in terms of the question that we're, or the example we're answering, we need the mean. So back at the top, our mean, 22.2 occurring. We've got the median, so coming back down, the median is 24. And finally, the standard deviation, remember we will always use SX, and so that will be 8.58, correct to two decimal places. And so there you can see our three responses correct to two decimal places. Most often you will be asked to do one of two things that you have seen in that example there potentially finding some of these summary stats from small displays, so histograms, dot plots, stem plots, or you are given the raw data and therefore you can utilise your calculator to find any of those summary statistics that might be needed.